good morning. It's really early here and bountiful. I woke up at two o'clock this morning and I just couldn't get this topic off of my mind. I usually wait a few days to do another 4 a.m. video to give everybody an opportunity to watch the last one. But this one's just too important. So here we go. As independent entrepreneurial thinkers, we often have one or two thought processes in common. Now these two thought processes are the exact same mathematical measurement, but one is applied to what we call our outer world, thoughts we have about things outside of us. And this one is focused on structure. And the question is, our mind applied to finding new ideas, are we analytical? And quite often, independent entrepreneurial thinkers are obsessive about thinking about new and better ideas. You just might ask yourself, what do I do to quiet my mind? The other thought process is in our internal world, is dealing with my dreams. How do I envision my life? And the area is called intentional. We're measuring visualization. Outside new ideas here, visualization of those ideas. How vividly do I think? And most entrepreneurial or independent thinkers are very visual and run a risk of being fantastical. Just a little bit of fantasy or even catastrophe in terms of a negative way of using this thought process. Well, I want to take this into a very special place this morning. I've been working with a client for the last year who's been struggling with depression. And she is being seen by a doctor and has medication to help mitigate the effect of melatonin, cortisol, those things that impact our, our stress, our anxiety, our depression. However, she was still struggling to overcome that depression. Now, I'm not a clinician. I'm the coach. So the doctor's working on the medication to treat the symptoms of depression. And I'm working on identifying, shifting the thought processes. This client had both of these thought processes way out of balance. And the challenge was that this person got into the habit of thinking negatively. So even when the medication made her feel a little better, the natural tendency when something went wrong was to go negative, to go into catastrophe. It would be much like, again, I'm not a clinician, so I just use this cautiously, but it's much like a diabetic. Type one diabetic on insulin or two on like metformin or some way to regulate sugar. And it regulates sugar in normal diets, but if that person were to have donuts for breakfast and ding-dongs for lunch and apple pie for dinner, it's gonna overwhelm their system. The medication will not be able to do its work. And that's what my client was discovering with the depression. The medication would do its work, but the habits of thinking were exacerbating or further complicating the challenge. I want to take you into this place because you may not have symptoms of clinical depression, but you may be having some symptoms of using these two thought processes destructively, which can be really destructive, uh, depressing in, in the sense, maybe not clinically, but feeling depressed, overwhelmed, discouraged, frustrated. I want to walk through how they work and then give you an idea or two for managing them. Because both of these thought processes could be compared to a fully charged fire hose. I said that yesterday morning. Remember that fire hose and we're not holding on to it, so it's just bouncing all over the place. You ever seen one of those on a video? And if you get close to it, it hits you, it'll kill you. It's just knocking stuff down. And we learn how to go out to the end of the fire hose and hang on to it and point it in a direction 
that will serve us, and we can do incredible things with these two thought processes. They are, in fact, gifts when they are managed. <laughs> when they are not managed, they can be the source of challenges in our self-worth, frustration with our life. Oh my goodness. So let's walk through them. I wanted to set the stage. The first one, the analytical measurement and structure. It's a thought process in which we effortlessly, we could use the word obsessively, but effort, effortlessly think about new and better ways to do something. Isn't that wonderful? When we're considering possibilities, we're incredibly thorough. In fact, you may have had the experience where you ask someone to do some research on a topic, they come back two weeks later to report, and in the first five minutes you're going, well, did you check on this, or did you, you check on that? It's like, didn't you think through this? And of course that person is going, oh, of course I should have, I'm just such an idiot, they're gonna think I'm terrible. We wanna to manage that. Or we get attached to an idea, and we need to be right. And we might actually be right. However, when we need to be right, the only other option for another person is to be wrong. And that pushes buttons in their self-worth. We may actually be calling into question their worth and worthiness, their ability, their character, their contribution, when we need to be right. And sometimes we don't have time to explore ideas. We just gotta get moving, please, please just listen to me. And there's resistance and we can't understand why they are hanging on to this stupid idea. Come on, let's get going here. Well, it's not the idea they're hanging on to, it's their self-worth they're hanging on to. And most of us with this thought process also know this. Most of us put ourselves in a position where we don't have someone in an authoritative position who can tell us what to do. That's part of our entrepreneurial drive is to not be in that place. We don't want to be micromanaged. We want to be able to take our ideas and execute on them. So just think about this thought process and see if that sounds at all familiar with you. Because if this obsessive thought process were to have one eyedropper of negativity placed into it, just boom, just an eyedropper, it can spiral into a dark dungeon of despair and discouragement in 10 minutes, just kaboom. And then we have this chronic release of all of these stress hormones in our body. And if we have depression, we're on medication, we'll overwhelm the medication. If we're not, we just overwhelm our body. Cortisol goes into the cells of our body connects to those little fiber cells and fibers on the ends of the cells and communicates that message of stress. Cortisol is being released to heal wounds and speed up metabolism. Well, it just makes us feel anxious and fearful. This false evidence that appears real, this creates fear. And we spiral down, we start acting on that false evidence that appears real, which drives it down even further and further and further. Just explore, have I been in this place? Let's go to the other thought process, the one in my dreams, this measuring our visualization. How intentional are we? Are we holding onto the fire hose and pointing it? <laughs> or is this a massive fire hose that's just going all over the place? And are we running the risk of using this thought process to go into the future to a time when something's been accomplished? Not for the purpose of coming back and creating it, but for the purpose of being able to go beyond it and imagine what life would be like after that. That's called fantasy. Because if we do, we're going to have norepinephrine coursing through our body. We're going to feel euphoric. I've shared this with you before. We're gonna have a new mental construct, a new reality, an expectation, a concrete condition for happiness. And every time life shows up differently, let's do this with me, let's go. 
ah, ah. We can rob ourselves of joy in the journey. We can be over-focused on how to create the money quicker, sooner to solve this problem. We can run around like a chicken with our head cut off, busy, 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 and frenetic, non-goal-directed activity, trying to figure out how to create it. We can be disillusioned. We've seen the other side. We're over here. How do we build this bridge? I just can't figure it out. And then we start beating ourselves up. The number one cause, the challenges in self-worth, unmet expectations. Just take a look at these two thought processes. Because here I am with this client who's under doctor care for medication and depression, but is complicating it because of their habits of thinking. Bless my father, passed away last year. But he used to say, paraphrasing Mark Twain, don't tell me worrying doesn't work. Everything I worry about never happens. Do you find yourself living that way? worst case scenarios, and then finding relief when it doesn't turn out that bad? Is that your source of joy? If that's possible, or if you've been going into fantasy and experienced catastrophe, or even going into counterfeit forms of mental pleasure, like a pornography addiction, trying to escape from the pains of life, any of this is happening. Let me share with you the breakthrough. It's fairly simple. Because again, these two thought processes are a gift. We just may have been using them destructively and not even knowing it. I'm here this morning because so many have these two thought processes and nobody's told them how to manage them. They're just on their own. And they're so powerful and incredible and potentially destructive. So here's a couple ideas. First of all, it's a choice. Now, if we're struggling with depression, it takes medication to be able to get to a point where we could make the choice. If we're not struggling with depression, we can make the choice. And the choice is... Fly your tomahawk. Not going there today. That's fantasy, counterfeit forms of mental pleasure, and that dark dungeon of despair and discouragement that wants to just <laughs> suck us in. We don't want to go there. You spend 10 minutes in that place, and you are mentally impaired for 10 hours. Fear dendrites shutting down your prefrontal cortex. Cortisol surging through your body, leaving you feeling anxious. You don't want to go there. So stop this very quickly, not going there today. I'm staying in creation. Now at first, this can be a little bit challenging. It's like starting an exercise program. It takes a little discipline because it's a natural default for so many to go into catastrophe or fantasy or expectation. So we choose to use it constructively. And we do this. If there's anyone I can serve, put them on my path and I'll serve them. What that means, if there's anyone I can serve in my uniqueness, based on my life experiences, put them on my path and I will serve them. Now, mind wants to go over here into catastrophe or fantasy or creating expectation. No, I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to bring with me a new secret desire and real intention. I want to engage in life. I want to embrace the obstacles as they come. I want to connect and serve with other people. I want to create value everywhere I go and with everyone I meet. And I want to be able to contribute to people. I come with that intention and then using this incredible gift to effortlessly think and do so vividly, I get inspired ideas, intuitive impressions, and creative solutions. Now, last week in a coaching session with this client, 
This client reported, I haven't had any inspired ideas this week. So we explored it a little bit more, and all of a sudden, her eyes lit up. Oh, I just remembered three impressions that came to me this week I didn't act on. They weren't like the windows of heaven opened and angels started seeing. They were very simple impressions that could bless a person's life. Oh my goodness, act on them. Well, she reported yesterday that she did. She acted. Impression, action. You see, we're built to be in this space. We're built for this. Because when we get this inspired idea, it ignites part of our brain that's normally dormant in a human being. This could be measured with a functional MRI. That's our passion. Passion drives our action. Often, we get validation our idea was inspired, or we create something we wouldn't have had otherwise. Sometimes we don't know fully the extent of the action that we've taken. Maybe not for weeks, maybe never. But here is the secret. When we get the inspired idea, <laughs> and we take the action, passion-driven action, that combination creates something that is hard to quantify. It's a peace, it's called equanimity, peace of mind, that surpasses understanding. It's hard to wrap your arms around it. You just know you're feeling it. You've connected. You're in a place, I like to call this God's playground. <laughs> Inspired idea. You're focused on serving, blessing lives, making this world a better place. You're in God's playground. You get an inspired idea. Just a little whisper. person's face pops into your mind. Just a thought, almost in passing. We could miss it. I want to pay attention to all of those and then act on them as if they're urgent assignments. And we get to have that experience of equanimity, that peace of mind which surpasses all understanding. This is a correct principle. The more we have this experience, the more we look over here at all these counterfeit forms of mental pleasure, fantasy with its norepinephrine, which is counterfeit pleasure, or we may be masochistic, which means we kind of enjoy beating ourselves up in this negativity. It's like a pity party, and we've, we've actually grown accustomed to it. We kind of don't necessarily like it, but we embrace it. And all of a sudden, there's light coming into our life. Inspired idea, intuitive impression, creative solution. That's our passion. We act on it as if it's an urgent assignment. I want you to know, but this is a secret, a great secret to success. And as we focus on staying in creation and getting these inspired ideas and acting on them, we will many times get validation. Many times. And we'll begin to feel peace, a joy in the journey. Now, for some of you, you've been creating these expectations by going into the future and then uh, holding life hostage. Imagine if instead of spending our time living in our mind, resisting and resenting the now, what would be different if we made the choice to live here, really live here, and we chose to go into our mind to get inspired ideas, intuitive impressions, and creative solutions for how we take the clay we have, what is, and how to create more with it. How to create more with it. Grateful for it, focused on it, creative idea of how to create more with it, and then at the end of every day, we celebrated what got created. What would be different? Wow, am I lowering my expectations? No. You're getting rid of 
concrete conditions for happiness. And your happiness comes from taking what is, getting an inspired idea from that source, igniting passion, acting on it as if it's an urgent assignment, and it may be serving another person, it may be a marketing campaign, it could be all kinds of things. We create more with what we have, we celebrate at the end of the day, and the next day we get up, we embrace what we have, get an inspired idea, we act on it, and we celebrate what we have. And we began to, as Og said, apply all of our efforts to become the highest mountain of all and strain our potential till it cries for mercy. Well, that's what's been on my mind. I know some of these pieces I've shared with you before, but this is in the context of, do you feel those depressive thoughts or have you actually been diagnosed with depression? Can your medication get you to a point where if you would then begin to shift your habits of thinking and think constructively, your medication could do its job. You could experience a normal life. Isn't that wonderful? Depression's very real. And some of us are experiencing depression-like symptoms simply because we're using these two gifts destructively. If there's anyone I can serve, put them on my path and I'll serve them. Living present in the now, getting inspired ideas about how to take what is and create more. And when we go here, but I don't like what is. But this is what is. And we spend time in resistance and resentment. We don't create anything new and different in our lives. We start here. Inspired idea. Action. See if today you can find an inspired idea and act on it. Just begin to feel a little bit of that equanimity, that peace of mind. You might even see the results. I've had a couple of those this week. Very profound. Because the more time you spend here, the more inspired the ideas, the more opportunities open for you to use your life experiences in the service of others. And both are a great source of joy in the journey. May you find joy by learning how to manage these two thought processes.